Let me show you how to solve just a real basic uh, projectile motion problem. Okay, so let's look at this problem here. Red Elk runs off a 3.8 meter tall cliff with a horizontal velocity of 4.2 meters per second and does a face plant in a snowdrift. And Bill Gates told me that the face plant was not a word, but I think it is, right? And then what time is he in the air? How far out does he land? I mean, we know he's far out because he's Red Elk, right? And then what is his velocity of impact with a snowdrift? Okay, so let's draw a little picture here. It's always good to draw a picture. This cliff is uh, 3.8 meters tall, and Red Elk is going to... He's going to run off this thing, right? He's moving uh, 4.2 meters per second, right? And he's going to follow some trajectory here and land someplace here, right? Okay, and we want to know the time in the air, how far out, what this distance is, right? And then we're going to figure out his velocity of impact. Now, the cool thing is we can actually set this up. The way you solve these is you just solve two separate kinematics problems, right? There's a horizontal problem and a vertical problem. Horizontal is this way, and then you know, vertical is up and down, right? And we've got initial, or we've got um, displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time, and we just do that in both directions. Okay. Now, in the horizontal velo direction, okay, all we know is his initial velocity is 4.2 meters per second. Okay. We don't know the horizontal displacement, okay. but this is true of all normal projectile motion problems, is that in the horizontal direction, the acceleration is zero. Okay. Assuming that Red Elk didn't recently eat a Taco Bell or that he doesn't have a jet pack on, okay, He's not going to accelerate. There's no way for him to accelerate horizontally. Now, vertically, he's going to accelerate, but horizontally, the, this is always true. Okay, um, and then vertically, of course, his acceleration because of gravity is going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay. Um, let's see what else do we know. Oh, if we know the acceleration is zero, don't we know the final velocity is the same all the way down? he's going to have the same horizontal velocity. This stays constant because air friction really isn't going to slow him down for the short time he's in the air. That's what we're saying, right? That's meters, okay? Now in the vertical direction, we know the displacement here. We know that in, while he's in the air, he's going to displace himself 3.8 meters down. That's why it's a negative sign. And then notice it says a horizontal velocity. Well, if it's horizontal, if that's all horizontal, that means the initial vertical velocity is zero. Okay, and I call, this is for a cliff problem, right? Okay, I call these things cliff problems. Um, so this is always true. This will be always true on Earth and different on Mars, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay, but now we're, now we're set. We've got one, two, three things here, okay? Um, that's enough to solve this entire side. And then here's the little trick. Time is the same on both sides. In other words, he's going to stop moving up and down at the same time he moves, stops moving side to side, and vice versa. So once we find the time on one side, we can move it to the other side, and vice versa. Okay? As I might say, time is on both sides. Sorry. Okay. So now I'm going to solve this side here. <clears throat> Let's solve the right side. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I can find the final velocity by using uh, v squared is u squared plus 2as, right? So that's going to be uh, v. The absolute value of v is the square root of uh, 0 squared, right? Plus 2 times negative 9.81 times negative 3.8. OK, when nobody's looking, I just leave out both minus signs, right? It's so the square root of uh, 2 times negative 9.81 times negative 3.8. Whoops. I should get like under a second because things fall. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm not solving for time. I'm solving for velocity. Okay, so I get um, that the answer is 8.63, uh, 6346, I'll say. Okay. And I'm carrying some extra sig figs because I don't want to round. Okay. And that's the absolute value of V. I know he's going down, so I'm going to put negative 8.6346 meters per second there. Negative because he's going down. Okay, 
Now I can find time. I'm going to use s equals ut plus one half at squared to find time. I could use any formula to find time, but I'm going to use that one. Okay. Um, so that uh, negative 3.8 equals zero plus one half negative 9.81 times uh, t squared, right? So my t is going to be what it's going to be the square root of two times negative 3.8 divided by negative 9.81. Uh, 0 0.88018. Right? Okay. Uh, did I do that right? I did. I'm going to store that in my variable t just for fun. Okay. Now, I can castle that guy across. Right? 0 0.88018. In other words, horizontally, we're going to stop moving at the same time. Right? So now I'm all set. Uh, the only thing that ever happens in the horizontal direction, and this is so cool about these problems, is that, uh, you know, I'm going to use this formula. S is ut plus one half at squared. If a is zero, this whole term goes away, and the only formula you ever use is s equals ut. And I'm going to use that right now. Okay? To figure out how far he goes, I'm going to use this time it took him to hit the ground, multiply by that that velocity and get the displacement. So that equals 4.2 times 0 0.88018 seconds. And this is meters per second, right? Okay. So I'm just going to go times 4.2 and I get uh, 3.6967 meters. Okay. So now I've got uh, I've, I've filled this whole table, and now it's time to answer the question, right? What time is in the air? Well, with two sig figs, I'd have to say 0.88 seconds, right? How far out does he land? I'd have to say with two sig figs, 3.7 meters, okay? And then velocity of impact with a snowdrift, there's two ways I can answer that. I can say that it's 4.2 meters per second in the x direction, this would be a component vector, and negative 8.6 meters per second in the y direction, right? Okay, or I can make, uh, and probably if they say velocity, they want an angle magnitude vector. So let's make that angle magnitude vector. Right when he hits, right here, he's moving over and down. So it's 4.2 over, and down it's going to be negative 8.6346. Right? So the magnitude of that impact, right, the, the, the speed with which he hits the ground, the magnitude is the square root of 4.2 squared plus 8.6346 squared. Okay? So square root of 4.2 squared plus 8.6346 squared. And that's 9.6, I get 9.6019 meters per second, okay? This would be the speed, okay? The magnitude of the velocity vector is the speed. So if they ask for the speed of impact, okay, that's what you're going to say is that hypotenuse. It's not this one, it's not that one, it's this guy. This guy's 9.6 meters per second, that's a 6. Let's make it look more like a 6, okay? And then if we want to make this, that speed into a, a velocity, we've got to find that angle, right? So that angle right there is the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. This is the opposite side, adjacent side, right? So 8.6346 uh, over 4.2, okay? So the inverse tan of... 8.6346 divided by 4.2. And that's 64.06 degrees. Okay? So if I had to, if I had to, to give this as an as an angle magnitude vector, which is almost always what they want, okay, I would say that the velocity is 64 degrees 
below horizontal. 